So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on creating a black and white photo and recoloring it back to say a more modern state. So black and white photos often are shot way back in time. And we've got these, like a ton of history in these photos, but they're just black and white and you might wanna see what it might look like in color. And in doing so, you can ultimately use Affinity Photo to create a rather realistic looking color piece. So. Without the color enhanced on this version of this rose uh, composition, I have a photo that looks like this. So with it on, we have the colors enhanced, everything's brighter, a little warmer. The look and feel is still vintage to me, and I like that about it, but the overall effect is that it seems more modern because there is color in play. In this video, we'll be focusing on making some masks and selections to ultimately create this look and feel from a photo that looks like this to start with. So to kick things off, I will first open up our original photo and go through this process with you. You can download these assets as a pro subscriber and just start from my file, or you can go ahead and start from scratch like we're gonna do here. Feel free to just copy what I did and just learn from it. I think ultimately when you open up someone else's design file and can pick and choose what layers and effects they've applied, you kind of learn a few things along the way. So I think that's really valuable in terms of software. Ultimately, we want this blue tone in the background. And to do that, we have to start with an initial shape on this piece. So I'm gonna just create a basic rectangle to start with, just the same size as the canvas. So you can lock it to the canvas as you pull those handles. There we go. And we can choose any color here. One thing to note though, we did open this file and it is set in black and white. So your color palettes are gonna adjust. If, if you have a completely set black and white photo, you can override this setting if you go to document color format and go to RGB or CMYK, depending on what you wanna work with. RGB is typically used for screen based imagery and CMYK is gonna, the final result will end up being printed on an actual physical piece of media. So we'll end up using RGB in this tutorial. And the reason for that is so I can access our actual colors. So we've got our full color spectrum here. And I don't have any set colors like I do for other videos where I use this um, from a swatch palette, but we can kind of pick and choose and, and just kind of go with the flow in terms of what this color could look like. Ultimately, I chose this blue tone to go with, and I think I like it quite a bit. It's kind of an aqua. So maybe I'll do something similar in this one. Maybe this kind of a peacock blue effect here. And this will be over top of our base image, of course. So I'll actually unlock that to start. And this is gonna be a soft light effect. So we're gonna start with that look. And from here, I'll ultimately lock this layer. Go and hit the lock icon there. and. Uh, there's bits of this photo I don't necessarily want to include. Right down here, if you look closely, there's a clothespin holding these together, and that's it doesn't seem like the most compelling thing to be in the image. So I'm actually going to crop that out and just go right to where the stem ends, and I'll hit apply there. And from there, I can begin. So what I want to start with are the actual rose petals, and I'm going to make those white with a slight hint of yellow in the, in, in the central portion, kind of more condensed color there. So to do that, we can start with a selection and I'm gonna use our selection brush tool and we'll set a width pretty high and just let it snap to the edges the best it can and just do this for all of the roses and you'll see it'll snap to other bits of the photo but we wanna disregard those for now. So go and spend quite a bit of time going through this process. If you hold option and click and do this, you can subtract in real time there and just go along these bits of the flower and make sure you get as close as you can to the edge. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we can refine it, but the, the more time you spend here, the better it will look in the end. So I'll go through and select each of the roses and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we have our selection made. One thing to note is there is a very close to budding uh, rose over here, which we'll end up doing by hand and painting in the color we're after. Uh, there's just not enough real estate to use a selection in this case. So with this selected, before you do anything, create a new pixel there, 
So with our selection active, we can go ahead and refine that. So I'll just use the default settings. So once you hit refine, there's some already applied to this. I'll hit apply and we'll go ahead and brush in what will be our fill. So this is going to be, we're going to use our traditional brush and I'm going to grab the white color and just paint in completely. And we'll use a blend mode next to optimize the look a bit better. So it's not so drowned out as you see currently. So with that active, we can maybe grab the average. I think it looks the best for my trials and errors prior to this video. So I think, yeah, average ended up being the best bet. And then from there, we can just deselect our selection. And you'll notice some bits of glow around the edge. You can adjust those with a new mask on that layer if you want. Ultimately, it's going to just take some real uh, elbow grease to get this to look perfect. So definitely the more time you spend on this, the better the end result will be. So maybe I'll just do this bit to show by example. So I'm just brushing in on a mask, a black fill. And I'll probably increase the hardness a tad since we're right up to an edge. You can just kind of fade out that glow next to the flower petal. So I think that looks okay to start. Um, it's still drowned out in terms of the background color, but we can go and continue on. Uh, I'm going to make the selection again by clicking the thumbnail holding command and create a new layer. And on top of that layer, I'm going to add another brush color that's going to be kind of a yellowish color. I want the, the very central part of these roses to have a yellow um, accent. So we'll go to our yellow and our color picker. Just get something kind of off white. Yeah, something like that, maybe a little more vibrant. go and with this I'll make the hardness all the way down and we can just point and click a couple times on the center of each flower just to give them a little more pigment and ultimately this is way too dark but what we'll do is another layer blend mode excuse me probably a color blend mode and then dial that back in the opacity range quite a bit maybe 50 percent just for some more realness of color there and then going one step further I might even blur that layer with a layer effect here just so it's kind of bleeds a little bit so that's essentially how you start coloring a photo you're gonna to have to make a selection and kind of refine that quite a bit to the best of your ability and then slowly integrate new colors into the mix so we'll do the same pattern with the uh, stems and leaves below so I'll start with that and make the selection Okay, so I spent quite a bit of time getting this selection selected, and in this state, we can go ahead and create a new pixel layer uh, first. And then what I'll do is actually put this at the foreground above our blue color, along with the other rose petals we were working with. So the blue is ultimately the background color, but not affecting anything we're putting on top. It's one thing I forgot to do prior to the selection, which isn't a big deal because we can always edit it, but it's just something I wanted to note. Uh, with this selection active, we can go ahead and make a refinement on it. So I'll just do the default one again. Uh, feel free to go above and beyond in this mode on your own. I'm just doing this by example so we can get the best selection we're after once we paint in the rest uh, of the layers and everything. So I actually might undo that just so I have a little more definition here. I noticed the selection went too far and selected more than I wanted to paint there. So I'm going to leave that alone and paint our new on our new pixel layer a basically a dark bluish color to start with. And then we'll come back in with a full, like a lighter green. So maybe a dark green first. And I might use a different color picker here. I, I, I kind of prefer the HSL color wheel. So I might go with like a very dark forest green color. A little closer to the blue spectrum, like so. 
And then with this active, I can get a brush out, a traditional brush, and we could go with a hardness of zero, opacity all the way up. Don't, don't fear if it's gonna uh, drown this out because we can use a blend mode to get the full effect rafter. So I'll just paint everything selected in this green. Just make sure you get a little bit of everything. Okay, great. And then with that, we can toy with some blend modes here and see what looks the best. Uh, maybe I think color is gonna win. Uh, because we want that color to be color, that color. So with that, we can keep that selection. I'm gonna add one more pixel there and adjust the green we use and maybe make it a lighter shade. And with that active, we can go in and just different areas of the image, kind of paint in areas you might think need that lighter green. I might just explore what it would look like on everything and just mask out the rest so let me do that real quick. So this one will too be color and, and it's definitely green at this point, but we want to decrease the opacity quite a bit. And then you can go back in on either of these layers and just mask out bits of it. So I'll grab a black color, for instance, cut the opacity down, maybe half, and then just pass through with the brush here and there just to get rid of some of the pigment. So already that's taken shape. There are some fragments of green still left over in the area that we don't want. So I can mask those out again on this layer, for instance, and just get rid of them completely. So again, I'll use a mask and just kind of go to town there. Again, the more time you spend, the better it's going to look. So keep that in mind as you're going through. The stem areas kind of need a little more finesse for the mask because they're a little harder to select in the end, but it did end up working. And you notice a little bit of that area that wasn't actually painted on. So we can go back through and paint on that again, manually using our two colors, for instance, kind of creating the same, same effect we were after initially. Great. So I'll leave that as is. Feel free to press on there if you want to enhance this further. One thing left to do is this rose bud over here. I want to actually make that white and we'll mock our first attempt with the selection, but we'll do this by actually doing it by hand. So I'm going to grab the brush tool and just paint on the white in this case. So I'm going to get a new pixel layer on the very top and grab our white brush and just brush that through it's just the areas that ultimately need it. So that's obviously fl like a flood fill. We want to actually make our layer adjustments to, to be average like it was at the first. And then we can add a little more of that, possibly duplicate that layer to be honest and make it a little brighter, so 40% maybe. And with that, we can add a little hint of yellow too if we wanted. So I'll add a new pixel layer to do that. Go back and grab just a light yellow tone. I probably should have saved this actual color in our palette library, but all in all, I'll just look for a vibrant yellow that isn't dull, but also very close to the white. And we'll get a brush again, B, and we'll grab that it's just at the very tip. I'm gonna actually use our previous brush as our selection just so I can get it refined. And just leave that as is, and then we'll make that color and decrease the opacity like 50% or so, maybe, maybe more 30, just a very subtle hint. And with that, things are looking pretty good. The masking overall around the third flower down there could be a little bit better. I might go back and redo that real quick after I save it. So you see it's a little foggy around the edges. So on this a traditional mask, we can go back through and brush that out. So I'll use a black brush, 
Hardness is set, opacity is up. Should be good to go. Maybe even going one step further on this actual layer, since we have that mask enabled, we can do masked layer adjustments. So if you wanna add perhaps maybe curves or something to the mix, we can try that. So this will be masked to this layer. Maybe I'll enhance my whites a bit, see if it does anything. So instead of the curves adjustment, like I just did, I'm gonna actually do it on our first image. So let's add a curves adjustment and I'm gonna use our first base layer as our object to go off of. So I'm gonna basically do a quick S curve, put this on this image and we have our mask all ready to go with that on it. So now just that bits enhanced, which is nice. So you see the different clarity there. So we could do the same with the pixel layer below it. So we'll do the same with another curves adjustment for those. Just kind of bump things up a bit. And you can just crop it to that layer as well. So again, just a little more vibrant. And then if you want to get even more intense, you can add a uh, vignette effect to the whole composition. So maybe we'll try that with a filter, colors, vignette. Just increase the exposure, or decrease it, excuse me, decrease the hardness, scale it up a bit. There we go. So there's areas that can be improved. Right here you can see some of that masking's definitely a little rough. Um, but we can go back and refine that. You can remove bits of the photo, etc. cetera. Uh, so feel free to adjust that where you want. We might just paint out a bunch of that right now. Yeah, there we go. And we could refine this to include that white back just on those edges so it's not so obvious that that's dark there. So right there, I switched back to black by pressing X on my keyboard. It's just a quick command to do so. And you could go right back to white by hitting X again. So just areas I see that kind of need some, some love. The cursor preview in Affinity Photo is super handy for this instance. If you see, if I go to black, I actually removing. If I go to white, you see I'm adding white back in. So yeah, you could tweak this for days, but I think all in all, we've, we've accomplished the task. Feel free to extend this further on your own. If you have your own work to share, feel free to share that on the comments below this video. And aside from that, I hope you found this useful. And in terms of your own photos, you might branch out after something like this and try to work on say a portrait. Skin tones are one of the hardest things to replicate from scratch. So that would be a very big, project to take on, but one that would be fun and challenging. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.